Hey guys, and welcome to the latest in r slash short scary stories. The series where I read short scary stories and produce no content of my own. But I do leave a link in the description so you can go and thank the uh, content creators for it. Today's episode consists of creepy nursery rhymes, some strange substance in a microwave that goes pop, and an emotional roller coaster in romance and well, you'll have to find out. The first story is by user underscore elephant underscore and it's called Humpty Dumpty. Crystal found a letter on her desk at work. This is a wonderful surprise, she thought. I wonder who it's from. She opened and inside there was a sheet of paper. It read, Ladybug, Ladybug, fly away home. There's a fire in your house and your children are alone. It wasn't signed. It was probably just a stupid prank, but she had to check. How did they know her children were home alone? She called home waiting for an answer. She tried again and again, but no luck. She called her neighbour, who told her the firefighters and medics were outside her home, but it was too late. Simon saw a note on his car. He looked around, trying to figure out what rules he had broken that led to his ticket. There was nothing. On closer inspection, it wasn't a ticket at all. It was a rhyme. Rockabye baby in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. And down will come baby, cradle and all. That's odd. Simon pondered for a minute, then thought nothing of it until he got a call from his wife. She was sobbing, and he could hardly understand what she was saying, but he heard enough. Their baby was gone, hanged from a tree. By now, I knew about the nursery rhyme killer. Everyone did. It's all over the news. Countless incidents have occurred and they're getting closer to where I live. I'm not worried though. The killer has only targeted families and I live alone. My parents are on the other side of the country. I took a shower and went back to my dorm. Written on the wall in dark red was a message. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. I knew they were far away, but I had to check on my parents. I went up to the roof to get reception and clear my head. The dial tone was killing me. Suddenly, two strong hands pushed me over the edge. So, what I really, really liked about this story is how the, uh, the main character at the end thought he was safe went up to the roof to see if his parents were alive and okay and yeah whew, that's gonna suck could you imagine what it'd feel like to be that person and just be pushed off a roof you know not a care in the world and then all of a sudden oh no i've made the biggest mistake ever so i'll give this one four out of five spooky wookies i really enjoyed it and i liked the use of the nursery rhymes in between it was added a nice, uh, nice creepy touch to it. So the next one is by Reddit user Hyper Obscura. That's a really cool name. Uh, and this one's called Popcorn Baby. Eliza Witherell wasn't right in the head. We all knew that. Her first day of school, she brought with her a dead effing bird. When prompted to explain herself, she stood up straight, held out the bird in front of her, and ripped its effing head clean off. She'd do crap like that almost weekly. Crazy effed up poo. I'm sorry about this, I'm trying to keep this uh, a little bit family, family? family friendly. Um, so if I do take a pause before reading an obscene word, um, it's because I'm thinking in my head what's the uh, most family friendly way of saying it. I'll start that bit again. She'd do crap like that almost weekly. Crazy effed up poo. 
fill the teachers' cabinets with maggots, eat cockroaches, force spiders down their fellow students' throats. She grew up, of course, as people often do, but she'd always be this uncertain shadow lurking in the corner of your eye, and you'd always subconsciously walk faster when you passed her on the street. Her parents were strange too, like they didn't really care what effed up crap she did which I guess wouldn't have mattered if it wasn't for the fact that they soon had another child, baby Gemma. Anyway, my dad was an electrician, so I'd help him out when I could, just carrying crap around, handing him stuff, that kind of thing. That day, the Witherals were having some issues with their fuse box, and my dad was having a look at it while I was just messing around on my phone. Hey, Mike. Eliza said, popping her head into the room like a freaky doll. Um, hi Eliza, I mumbled. Want a sandwich? I'm watching baby Gemma today and we'd sure like some company. Run along, boy, my dad said. I got this. Uh, sure, I said. I followed Eliza into the kitchen and she quickly made me a ham sandwich. In the background, I could see the microwave lighting up. But as I was about to sneak a peek into it, Eliza's crazy eyes were suddenly all up in my face. Baby Gemma could eat popcorn all day, she said, handing me the sandwich. I took a bite and nodded nervously. I bet, I said. I could hear the discordant sound of the microwave humming in the background, occasionally interrupted by a distinct pop. Can't get enough of it. It's all I ever feed her, you know. Mm-hmm. I mumbled, taking another bite. Pop, pop, pop. Sometimes I'll even call her my little popcorn baby, she giggled. Pop, 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 pop. A horrible thought suddenly crossed my mind. Where was the baby? Where was Gemma? Eliza, I muttered. What's in the microwave? Don't tell me it's your sister. She threw her head back and laughed. Of course not, silly. It's just popcorn. I told you, she really liked popcorn. Liked? I stuttered. I do too. That's what gave me the idea. Fat her up on it, you know. Maybe the flavour would transfer. Uh, what? Did it? She gave me a crazed look of anticipation. I glanced down at my half-eaten ham sandwich, of which had tasted overly buttery. I felt my stomach churning, like all those times Eliza messed with us back in school. Only ten times worse. A hundred times worse. Did you taste the popcorn baby? She yelled. Okay, so that took a turn. Um, I really like how the uh, story makes you think that the baby's in the microwave and then BAM! Or ham. Sandwich. Baby. Sandwich. Ugh. That is, um... Yeah, that's pretty sick. Um, and Eliza sounds very, very creepy. It's a first for me, but I'm going to give that one a five. That that creeped me the hell out. And yeah, I, d I don't know whether this sounds right, but I hope it creeped you out too. Eh. So the next story is by Reddit user Triple Cross Product. This one's called The Twin Chambers. The design is simple. A large room divided in two by a sheet of glass. The two halves are identical and completely sealed off from each other, but for a small tube connecting the two air supplies. The captives are locked in opposite sides and given a simple chemistry set and a list of instructions. Nothing even slightly complicated. Some tubes, flasks, flames and a few stoppers with a large metal tank. So that even a monkey could make the toxic gas with a small amount of mental effort and sufficient pressure. The goal is simple. One of the captives must kill the other by connecting their poisonous gas to the tube and letting it fill the opposite side. 
murdering their companion. You were forced to watch your partner manufacture the instrument of your death, and often race them to it. The survivor is let free. If both refuse to cooperate, after a few days, the rooms will be flooded, of course. After we were captured, I woke up in my chamber opposite my wife. We'd both heard the stories, even knew some of the survivors from these things. We'd heard the list of tools people had used to try and escape, and the success rate of zero. We spent the first day crying, staring at each other through the glass. I briefly tried breathing on the glass to draw or write, without success. We could hear each other faintly through the tube. We tried to fit something, anything, through that narrow opening to reach each other. Nothing worked. On the second day, my wife just said, I'm sorry, I can't do this. Then she got to work making the poison. I sat there and watched as she put on the goggles, as she studied the instructions, noted the thermometer, working tirelessly to create my destruction. I loved her and I would let her do it in peace if she wanted to be free. Hours later, she had finished siphoning the gas into the tank. I stood at the window and readied myself, trying to think of something to say. She came to the tube with the tank, but I could conceive of no fitting last words. In the end, she had to speak for me. I love you. She shoved a stopper on the tube and pumped gas into her own chamber. I wonder how many pairs have killed themselves together rather than go through with this punishment. If I understood what she was doing, I would have tried to stop her, probably killing myself quickly and painfully with a shard of glass. But she knew that. I did not act, and now I had to bear witness for an hour of my worst nightmare. I could have shut my eyes, but I couldn't let her die alone. Then the door opened, and I was free. Okay, um, hay fever season's coming, um, if you didn't know, that was really sad. Really sad and emotional, um, a nice twist at the end, I did not, not for her, but, um, for the main character, I guess, that's, uh, it wasn't creepy, um, so I'm going to give it 3 out of 5, but it was a really good story and really well written. Um, I genuinely thought the wife was going to uh, kill her husband, but no, she, she came through in the end. The heroine, the hero of the story. Um, so yeah, but that was a, a really nice one to read, so... But massive props to uh, Triple Cross Product, because... That was a roller coaster of emotions. So I hope you've enjoyed the latest in the R slash short scary stories. If you've got any stories that you want me to read, any short stories that are relatively the length of the stories that I read, uh, don't hesitate to let me know. We're also now on multiple different social media platforms, so I'll leave a link to the Twitter, the Instagram, the Facebook, and the Discord down below so if you want to come chat with me send me your stuff or tell me that i'm terrible at this and need to quit click those links thank you once again and take care